So it has been a, a rich and long day, and so I'm going to be quite brief um, and share some of the U.S. perspective on the training of orchestral musicians. Uh, in large part due to the challenges faced by U.S. orchestras, this has been a, a serious topic for conversation for the last 15 to 20 years at least, um, and has been much debated. What are the priorities for training orchestral musicians? How do we balance those priorities? Uh, in the last decade or so, there have been some significant advances and also periods of stasis in that, in that development of how we think about training orchestral musicians. Dialogue on this topic has been framed uh, through a number of fundamental questions, which include, what is the job of an orchestra? And then, depending on how we answer that question, what skills do we need musicians to have in order for orchestras to be able to do what we want them to do? Indeed, what skills do we hope musicians can have? And if we are hoping for these things, then how are our musicians going to acquire those skills? We have not fully answered those questions yet, but those are some of the um, the questions we revisit um, across the field in the U.S. For a long time, Leonard Bernstein uh, was the sort of traditional brilliant artist educator model in the U.S. and I think in many places around the world. Um, and there's no question of his brilliance, but I think that we also leaned on some of his innate skills um, for a long time. His unbelievable charisma and his gift for um, articulate opening up of music and musicians for, for people who had very little experience with music. As U.S. orchestras have increasingly struggled, I think that we, and the, the reach of U.S. Or orchestras into popular culture um, in the States has been challenged. We have had to think very seriously about how to handle that. Um, and I think it has in part challenged the, the assumptions we made about the fact that there are certain musicians who are just good at this education business and that it was very challenging to try to develop those capacities in people. And um, we have, I think, come around to realizing that it's actually essential to develop our broader array of skills in musicians and that we can't just depend on the Leonard Bernsteins of the world um, to be the beacon of uh, you know, developing interest in, in classical music. I mentioned earlier that there are advances and then there are periods of um, stagnation and this seems to relate, not surprisingly, in part to financial times. Um, in crisis, things don't seem to move that much. Uh, but in better economic times, there actually have been some significant developments. In the U.S., at this point, every major conservatory has at least um, an elective course that helps musicians to develop a broader array of skills. There are also some other significant programs um, that are required and whole institutes devoted to developing musicians' abilities more broadly. Um, I won't talk about them in detail. I'm happy to, to talk more later if people are interested, but um, uh, the Entrepreneurial Musicianship Program at New England Conservatory is a significant new program that provides services to current students, both, both undergraduate and master's degree students, alumna, um, and, and works to help musicians become more comfortable in an educational context, in a community context, and has a big focus on entrepreneurial skills and, and leadership development. Eastman, the Institute for Musical Leadership, has been in place for quite a while and continues to be a strong resource for, for musicians. Um, the Academy Program, which is a program at Carnegie Hall in collaboration with the Juilliard School and the Wild Music Institute, is a postgraduate training program for young musicians, again, who are interested in developing a broad array of skills. And that program um, takes young musicians who have to make it through a very, very rigorous audition process and interview process 
places them, gives them a, an enormous amount of professional development over the course of two years with lots of workshops with all sorts of um, different experts across these areas. Also um, puts them in New York City public schools for two years of intensive work and learning. Um, we place them in community settings and healthcare settings in um, sometimes in, in some correctional uh, facilities to um, to develop their skills in those contexts and also has a big, uh, the program has a big focus on leadership ability. Uh, those are just some of the, the sort of larger initiatives in the U.S. Um, the, one of the challenges is that, well, there are a number of challenges for orchestras, I think. One of them is that orchestras are not willing to change the way they manage auditions. So let's say that an orchestra believes and, and is committed to doing a broader array of work, but they also want, of course, to have the best musicians they can possibly find. And in the vast majority of cases at this point, orchestra auditions still are purely about musical ability. So I'm, let's say I'm running a conservatory. I'm going to prioritize developing musical ability in young musicians until the day that orchestras decide that they are going to care about other things in their audition process. And that is one of the um, existing blocks in the system that until the audition process changes, conservatories are not going to prioritize this other piece and orchestras feel like they need these other abilities, but they certainly don't want to um, say, oh, well, we'll take a less gifted musician who's really brilliant in you know, speaking to audiences and engaging young people, et cetera. And that, I believe eventually that is going to shift, but that's still where we are at the moment. Another major challenge for orchestras, I think, as I see these um, programs that are really developing leadership ability in musicians and um, all of these other skills, is that many of the most gifted young players who are going through those programs do not want to play in an orchestra because they are engaged in this broad array of activities. They want to play chamber music. They might love to play in orchestras, but they also want to play chamber music, and maybe they're really passionate about um, you know, social activism in some particular way, and they, they want to have a chance to do that kind of work. And, and they don't perceive, in many cases, orchestras to be places where they can really flex all of those muscles and where they'll be um, genuinely artistically satisfied. And I think this is a this is a problem for orchestras because as the really gifted young musicians um, start to develop more and more skills, we need them to want to play in orchestras um, so that orchestras can take advantage of all those, those abilities. Another thing that's been happening in the States lately, um, it used to be starting, I would say, in the mid-1970s when public education in the U.S. really uh, stopped funding music education. The big cultural institutions started to get very involved in, in music education, and that included orchestras. Um, and so a lot of the professional development or continuing education for orchestral musicians was really focused on K-12 to and how, how orchestra members could become effective in delivering on basic educational goals for, for school children. Lately, that, um, that training interest has moved beyond the K-12 to context and is much more focused on leadership skills and entrepreneurial skills. And it's just a thing to note. It's not necessarily a negative thing, but, but I think it's noteworthy. In my opinion, um, the strongest of these alternative training models are not um, programs that separate out your musicianship from everything else. They tend to be programs that find ways of integrating your musical skills with development of personal artistic vision, which might mean becoming passionate about some particular additional area of work, et cetera. I think that the more that we can think about integrating these skills and developing the whole musician, the whole human, um, the, the stronger the, our, our young musicians will be. Carnegie Hall has a significant commitment to doing professional development for musicians and just a couple of um, of tenets of that work because we work across genres, so not just in classical music, music but also with world musicians, um, with, with 
hip hop musicians, with musicians who are doing a lot of recorded music, etc. Um, we have interesting collaboration among those artists who are working together on various programs, and they learn a lot from each other. Um, just to give one example, there is often an assumption that it's really easy to do participatory work in world music because it's totally, it's much more accessible, it's fun, it's easy to get people you know, dancing or singing or doing things. And one of the things that I have loved about seeing this collaboration between classical musicians and world musicians evolve is that it raises the stakes on everyone's um, thinking about how we engage audiences. We do a lot of professional development that includes partners, so includes people from um, correctional facilities where we're working, includes music therapists, includes physicians, includes social workers, includes nurses in professional development so that we are, we are as much as possible tapping expertise that exists in these situations and then imagining together what might be possible. We do a lot of what I would call, and this is jargon, um, embedded professional development. So looking at ongoing training, um, musicians who are working in a school, for example, are observed in that school, they observe other people, there's an ongoing conversation about the quality of the work, what we mean by quality, what seems possible, and an, an evolution um, that, is, that is almost always collaborative, including staff from that organization, staff from Carnegie Hall, other musicians in a, um, a really inquiry-based and evolutionary professional development model. And the final thing I'll, the final thing that I will say is just um, a tiny bit about my personal story, um, because I'm, I was trained as an orchestral musician. Um, and I, I went to the Juilliard School, I'm an oboist, I did my undergraduate and my master's degrees there. I was a very serious orchestral musician. I thought that I wanted to play in an orchestra. Um, but as I grew up, <laughs> I became more and more frustrated at the lack of opportunity I perceived um, as a musician to do things that would potentially have an impact on social causes I cared a lot about. And in my master's degree, I co-founded a wind quintet. I played with that ensemble professionally for a number of years. I worked for the New York Philharmonic and Lincoln Center Institute as a teaching artist, so did a lot of work in classrooms and then got more involved doing professional development um, with, with other musicians. And I ended up taking a different path. I got very interested in the role that a cultural institution could play within its community quite broadly. Um, but I just, I, I was very lucky. I had amazing mentors. Um, I ended up in the right place at the right time. Um, people championed me in, a, in particular ways. My orchestral background and training, as well as my teaching artist abilities, served me well in being able to frame skills in different contexts. And I, um, you know, I, now I work as, as an administrator. I don't think that we have very well-defined pathways for musicians and their own professional development. I'm constantly in conversations with young artists who are interested in doing all kinds of things beyond just being on the stage. And in many cases, they don't want to leave the stage, but they want to bring everything they know and, and their, their musical experiences and passion to others in a range of ways. And they don't know how to do that because we are not either within higher education, um, in most cases, in higher education, in, in the cultural community, um, in popular culture, we're not articulating a very clear path for people. And I, I just share that because I think we, we need to, and I think we can do better. And I think just in listening to the conversation today, there are so many incredible examples of, of musicians doing all sorts, sorts of terrific work. And um, so I, I share that sort of in a hopeful way. I think much is possible. And um, as, as, a, as a field, the more we talk to each other, I'm sure the better that we'll, we'll get it at that.